Today we're making topographic maps in Blender. So um, the first thing you're going to want to do is go into Blender, obviously, and open the user preferences. You're going to want to open and enable the Node Wrangler add-on, as well as the land, the Ant landscape add-on. So check both of those boxes. Click Save User Settings. Now, if you want to use uh, real-world information and height data, then it's actually pretty simple. You just go open a web browser and go to this terrain.party. Uh, you'll see this little blue square. You can drag it wherever you want. You know, you can zoom out on the world and drag it, whatnot. Or you can go up here and search something. For instance, Grand Canyon. There we go. And it'll just drop the box right on top of it. You can make it bigger or smaller with this. You can view shaded relief and that sort of thing. So um, once you have what you want to get, then just go ahead and download that, export it, and it'll download. Now it might take a while because it's parsing all sorts of information and saving it out. So while that downloads, I'll just show you how to make a generated landscape. So if you just want to try this out with a generated one, just push Shift A, Mesh, Landscape, and then the, all the settings are down here in the corner. You can uh, go ahead and resize that if you want to. They've got some presets here, for instance. You can grab one of those, whatever you want. I like this Mountain 2 one. So I'll keep that, and I'll just scale it up a bit. Now, once you manipulate your object, those settings are going to go away. So you can't, you can't edit the landscape later. All right, so we have that. And then... Over here, if you want to use real-world information, just go ahead and save it, and then click it. You're going to want to grab this merged one here, this one that says merged, and then pull it into wherever folder you want to keep it in. So you can see right here, this is our height map for the Grand Canyon. So we're going to go ahead and go into Blender. This is a generated one. We'll just move that aside. Pushing G and Y. We can add a plane. Scale it up a bit. Be a similar sort of size. And then we're going to add a modifier. Subdivision surface. And put it to simple. Set it to like 6 or so. Whatever you need. Probably 7. That will just give it some more, uh, more information for the displacement modifier. So you're going to go ahead and add a modifier. Displace. Create a new texture and click this button right here to go to that texture page. Then click open and find that uh, height map you just found. Now, as you can see, it's pretty spiky and disgusting. So what you want to set this, this color space button down here, you want to set to non-color data, which will give you some better stuff. Now, if you set it to linear versus non-color data, it's a very slight change, but that's um, some versions of Blender handle that differently. All right, so the modifier is extremely powerful, so let's turn it down a bit. It's, all right, maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.4, something that looks good like that. Um, and then we have, we can turn this up um, to get more detail, and we can go and make it a smooth surface by clicking the smooth button. So now we have some... Grand Canyon generated stuff here, which I can scale up. There we go. And we can make our to topographical map on this or on this. I'm going to just uh, make an example and use both of them in this, in this case. So I'll just move this over here. All right, so we now have two separate landscapes a real world one and a generated one that has a lot less detail. Um, I'm just going to go into top view by pushing seven and then five to go into orthographic and then control alt number pad zero to move the camera. I'm going to right, uh, right click the uh, camera and go into the settings, click orthographic and let's make it a square, uh, actually not a square image. Let's make it uh, 1080 times 2, so it's 2160 by 1080, 
Now if we go into oh the wrong one, so this one should be 1080 and 2160. So then we have a little bit of a different one. Now orthographic scale is basically like zooming in and out. You can go ahead and move that around. And then G shift Z to move the camera on all axes except for the Z axis. So we're not moving it up and down. And there we go. So now we have both of these. Just for this example, um, you can see both of the two different landscapes. All right, so now we're going to make a material for the topographic map. So I'm going to go into rendered view and grab down here in this bottom left corner and slide it outwards. I'm going to push T and N while hovering my mouse over here and T and N while hovering my mouse over here to close it. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Resize this a bit. And then switch this one to the node editor. Now what you're going to want to do is click this world button. And set the background to be completely black. So nothing, nothing's happening. So we're going to want to take our both of our landscapes. And apply the same material to them. Alright, so now we have this material over here. And we can start working on it. Now... Uh, this material is pretty simple. We're just going to delete this diffuse one and add an emission shader. You can either search it or go into shader emission. Type that and put it into the surface. So now we have this glowing thing. I'm going to set the strength to 5 um, and keep the color at white. We can change that in a later point. Um, then we're going to add a input geometry. And this is actually not object info, which is what confused me for a long time. Basically, this geometry node, and this is where the node wrangler add-on comes in. If you control shift, click something, it'll preview it. As you can see, different colors represent different directions, including the vertical depth. So what we're going to want to do is add a converter, separate X, Y, Z. And in Blender, the Z axis is the vertical axis. So you can see it going from darker to lighter. Now, unfortunately, color only goes from zero to one, but this has all of the information there. So let's just move this and organize it up a little bit so it's, we don't have spaghetti everywhere. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this Z value into a texture, wave texture. Now, as you can see, it's already sort of got these topographical bands, but it's pretty weird looking. So what you're gonna wanna do set this to be saw and then turn the scale down until you get the amount of lines you think is appropriate the amount of topographical lines now you can see from the camera view it's kind of like a topographical map but it's got this weird blurring because it's a saw so we can fix that by basically adding a converter color ramp and changing the contrast. Now, instead of having it linear, what we're going to do is we're going to set it to constant and reverse it. All right, so now we're going to drag this all the way down to about um, 0 0.001. And very, very thin. And uh, as you can see, there's this sort of a glitch thing going on here. And that's basically because that whole plane is assigned to be that line. And we can fix that just by um, adding on top of the, uh, right here, the separate X, Y, Z. We can change the Z with a math node. And we'll just drop that in there and then we'll add a small value and then it will fix it. There we go. So you can see there's all of these very thin lines. Um, but the problem is, if you want the lines to be thicker by dragging this, um, this color ramp node here, if you make the lines thicker, you'll get this weird distortion where some of the lines are thicker in certain places. And that's basically because it's projecting these lines across it. But on shallower surfaces, that projection casts light on more places. 
uh, more area. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this back to 0 0.001 or so. A very thin amount. We could do even less if we wanted 0, 0, 0, 0.005. You know, something incredibly thin. All right, there we go. So now we have these very thin lines. Um, and we're going to basically make these thicker in post processing with the blender compositor. Now, this material can be assigned to any object you want. This is basically the uh the topographical material. Now, basically you could use this as you could use this color ramp as a mix factor between two different materials or whatever you want. But I'm just going to plug it into the color of this emission shader. And then we'll just delete that viewer node. So as you can see, we've got some bright but thin lines, of which we could make even smaller if we wished. It says zero, but it's clearly not, as there is thickness to the lines. All right, so now we can close that node editor and go into our camera view. And let's set the resolution to something like 400%. I'm just doing this so I can have more detail in my topographical map. You um, may want to change this, but yeah. All right, so next up, make sure you have about a l at least 75 samples, because if you don't, the, the lines will be quite jagged. I'm going to start rendering now. I'm using GPU compute. All right, so the render is complete now. You can see we have these very thin lines and the reason we're doing these thin lines is if we try and make the lines a bit thicker then we get this sort of distortion that I told you about before now basically the way to fix that is it's a human perception thing um uh the difference between a 50 pixel line and a 100 pixel line is twice as much but it looks very drastic versus the pixel the difference between a 1 pixel line and a 2 pixel line it's still twice as thick but it doesn't look as intense. So basically we are going to expand these lines in the Blender compositor. So you're going to go over here and click compositing um, and then go ahead and click use nodes and backdrop. Now we're going to add a output viewer node and a layout reroute. This will basically just allow us to see uh, our background, you know, our image as we edit it in the background. You can, I'm going to zoom it out and move it up a bit, just so I can see it. Alrighty, so uh, we don't need this window or this window. So now, uh, basically what we're going to do is expand these lines. Now, uh, math is kind of complicated, but there's a pretty easy way to do this. If you remember the color ramp from earlier, we took the blurry lines, the blurry topographical lines from the wave texture and sharpened it out using the uh, the color ramp. So what we're going to do here is if you actually take a filter blur node and blur it by like 20 pixels or something, you can actually see the lines expand. They get thicker. You want to click gamma to be able to keep the brightness. There we go. See? M much nicer. Now the lines you can see have expanded, but they're blurry once again. So, how do you fix that? It's pretty easy. I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. The size indicator here will change the size of your lines. Okay, so they're a bit blurry, so I'm going to turn this down a bit. And then I'm going to add a converter, um, and then a color ramp. And set this to constant, just like before. And then we're going to drag this white one down until the entire lines are connected to each other without any breaks between them. As soon as we've got that, I found that about 0 0.01 works pretty well. Um, you can see the lines are now much thicker, so I can change the zoom on this and let's just move it. You can see the lines are thicker without that weird distortion from before. So if you want to change the size of the lines, you can do so with this size thing on the blur. So you can adjust it to whatever you wish. 
adjusting these X and Y will make it so that you can set it to even thicker if you want to. Um, and then if you want to have a fewer amount of lines, of topographical lines, or a larger amount of topographical lines, all you have to do is go back to that uh, material we had, and it is the it is the scale value of this um, wave texture. So if I turn it to 0.8, you can see we have that many lines. If I turn it down to like something like 0.2, we only have that many lines. Uh, you know, 0.3, we have that many lines. So the the larger the scale value is, the more lines there are. It's not very intuitive, but yeah, that's about how it works. Now. If you want to change the color from white on black, you can go back to compositing. And it's uh, actually pretty simple. Um, what I like to do, I'll just move these out of the way so they're not. I'll add a converter. Actually, it's a color. Color invert. Now it's black on white. Um, if you want to add... Anything else aside from this black on white, for instance, you want to change the color of it. Uh, it's pretty simple. Basically, if you see this white thing here, if we click this here, we can actually change the color of the lines. Uh, now, it's inverted because of this invert node. Um, so if you choose a green color, it'll actually be pink. And if you choose a blue color, it'll be yellow. What's on the opposite side of the color wheel? So you can just choose the color of your lines and you can change how dark they are but it's all inverted as you remember because we're doing black and white so i'm going to have these greener lines and if you click down here you can switch between the different sliders and let's have like a yellowish uh or maybe like a, a more purple background right so you can you see we can do that very simply, just by editing these two colors of the color ramp. Um, so, yeah, you can change the line thickness with this blur, the amount of lines with the uh, wave texture, and then the colors with this color ramp, and you can invert it with the invert node. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. So, yeah, I hope this helped you, and I will see you later.